You all got questions? I yes. got no answers. <laughs> um, I sent in a, just a little page of just a couple of stuff that I've, that I've worked on. It's on the Dropbox. Oh, my God. My portfolio, yeah. Nope. Okay. Nope. Nope. All right. Okay. All right, cool. That's all I need to see. Throwing this away in the trash. Get out of here. <laughs> I keep it my drive clean <laughs> for the next class. Um yeah, I can talk about it while I'm doing the demo, actually. So that's technically not a portfolio, right? Um, yeah, no, I just had to whip that up. When you said to turn in your portfolio, I was like, okay. Well. Yeah, so the reason why it's not, because nobody is going to potentially ask you to... Um, nobody's going to ask you to, like, paint the Joker. Like Heath Ledger Joker. You know what I mean? Like... Um, in in the in the slightest like they're not going to ask of you to to do this for like a concept art job mm -hmm. right uh so i actually recommend people remove all and any studies from their portfolio now your art station you can treat it like more of like a portfolio and sketchbook that's kind of what i treat it like and some of my peers too you know and then you can even categorize it differently. Like I, I kind of do that with, um, with some of my stuff too, right? But the reason why is because it's it's not indicative of what you could actually do, right? It's it's a it's a lie, you know. And any any good recruiter will know that, okay? Because uh, there are plenty of students that I've had. Like I had one student who his paintings were literally photorealistic. It was insanity. Like he had paintings of people's families and stuff and they were photo, photo real. It was intense, okay? And what I ended up finding out is that he had no ability to design whatsoever, right? Like I asked him to like do some sci-fi characters and he could not do it is everything he did was just so bad and um like and it was crazy too because and i'm sure you've experienced this where his characters didn't even look like it, it didn't look like the same person drew them like you would look at his paintings that he did from his past life right compared to the stuff he was turning into my class it, it felt like it was a different artist does this make sense and he he found out like later like the reason why this happens is this duality is that one skill is not the same as another and i think you understand this i just kind of like want to make sure you really make understand this okay so let's use an example of a goalie and a forward in soccer okay a goalie and a forward in soccer if the goalie just said one day, hey, I want to be a forward now to their boss, to their coach, and just became a forward, do you think they'll be as good as the forwards that are already there? No way. No way, right? Because they're not trained to do that. And vice versa. If the forward was like, hey, I want to be a goalie, it just it's not going to work out, right? But they're playing the same sport. They're even on the same team, you know what I mean? And why do I like to tell this is because it really, it, it demonstrates a, a good point of what I'm trying to get at of like, although it's still art, right? It's different disciplines, you know? Um, like there are illustrators that try to get jobs as concept artists, for instance, and they do really terribly. And there are people, and like, and I'm not talking about illustrators that are mind blowingly good. Like the kinds of illustrators that you guys probably look online and think these guys are masters. But then if you ask them to concept something from their imagination, they will suffer greatly. Okay? And, and vice versa. You understand? And so I, I am very aware of this 
problem even with my own work, right? Like if you were to ask me to do a, like, you know, Russell is drawing a bunch of gerbils. If you ask me to draw a gerbil, I'll do very poorly. Okay. Unless, unless I had some reference, you know, if I had some reference, I could probably do okay. All right. But I would need reference. I would need a lot of guidance because I'm not good at drawing dribbles because I've never drawn them before, you know? And the advantage that I have in this, this thing called concept art is that I am quite aware of this disadvantages uh, where I think a lot of my peers and contemporaries, they become incredibly insecure. Like if I took like, you know, the tally and tell them to draw like a gerbil and he did really bad, you know? Uh, actually, Vitaly is a bad example, but like I can think, I can think of a couple of my friends if they did a bad job on like a painting, they'll like you know they'll talk all kinds of shit about why it's happening, you know, instead of just admitting that they just don't know how to paint the thing, you know. Yeah. Where I am like I'm not a good illustrator, so I need to practice illustration. You know what I mean? And and I teach this to my students because it's it's the best way to go about it, you know. And so the, those types of drawings are deceiving is what I'm getting at. And I, I love whenever people show that stuff because it's a great opportunity to talk about why, you know? Uh, 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 what, I, I did like a portfolio review one time and it was great because this guy really thought that he was like so dope, right? He had like, and you're not, you're not coming off this way. I'm just giving you an example of somebody totally <laughs> delusional, right? And he was just like, let me show you my portfolio. And he started off, and this is always a, a bad sign for me, with just tons of studies like in his portfolio, right? And I'm like, if you're starting off with like still life of a fruit basket in terms of your portfolio to me, then there must be some shame in your actual concept art, you know? And sure enough, I eventually got to his concept art and it was definitely not great, you know? And uh, he, he was showing it to me and I was looking at it and I was being very critical of the concept art and I was like, yeah, this is not very good. Like you need to work on your sense of design and such. And he's like, what are you talking about? My design's good. And I was like, and you don't know how to render materials? And he's like, I do know how to render materials. And I was like, you don't. And then uh, I went to his still life and you're, I was like, you mean like this stuff right here, right? He's like, yeah. I was like, okay, cool. So look at this chrome ball, right? Look how good this chrome ball is, right? It, it's very believable. And then I went to like one of his characters that looked like they had like metal armor, like Lisa was supposed to be, but it looked plastic and really gross, right? It didn't, wasn't rendered well. And I was like, then how come this armor looks like it was made from a fr uh, Fisher Price toy set, you know? And I like took the two because he had like the, those pages where you could take the, like the, it's like a, you could take it out of the page, like he had a, had a physical print, right? And I put it right next to each other and I said, these look like they're not from the same artist, you know? And it was really cool because his mind, I could see his mind literally blow up, <laughs> you know? Like he, every disillusion that he had was exposed and it was really, it was a really good moment for him. It was very powerful, I can tell, you know? And he was just like, oh my God, you're right, you know? And I was like, yeah, like, look at these faces, like these faces you did in these portraits, right? They're really good. But then let's look at your character's face. Why does it not look the same, you know? And I'm sure, again, like you already understand this sentiment, right? Because you've been in the class long enough to understand this, these principles, right? Mm -hmm. So I always tell people, don't show that stuff because that is not portfolio stuff. It's not gonna give you an advantage in any way, shape or form ever, okay? And I'm not trying to, to, to be harsh on you. I'm just giving you some reality, okay? Mm -hmm. There's never gonna be a case where like, you know, your concept art is kind of mediocre, but these, these life drawing stuff, man, I'm convinced you're capable of doing the work we need. That's just not ever going to happen. And it's a lie to you, to, you too, you know, because you aren't capable right like i said there's the greatest stories of like illustrators who try to become concept artists and they fail miserably you know 
because it's just a different discipline. Uh, in Illustrator usually too is given a prompt, you know, like some of the times the characters aren't even designed by the illustrator, right? Like an illustration is the final product. You understand? Meaning that someone else might have designed it, come up with the story, the aesthetic, the colors. As an illustrator, all you're doing is just making it look cool and like a cool shot. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so, um, and I, 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 I learned this the hard way too by trying to be an illustrator, even though I was trained as a concept artist, you know? But I will say that going as a concept artist to illustrator uh, is, is much easier, okay? So you can have that to look forward to. Like if you are practicing the, the arts of concept art, you're actually in the, in the better state, okay? Yeah, it's kind of like the jack of all trades concept artist. Yeah, concept artists, we like, well, I wouldn't even say jack of all trades. It's more like, um, it's more like kind of like, I'm trying to think of like, a, it's like if you were trained as a Marine or like a Navy SEAL, right? Yeah. And then, and then you just like leave all of that. And then now you just go to like a local CrossFit gym. Like you're probably going to do well, or you go to like any kind of like powerlifting, like rock climbing, like you're, you're kind of built for most circumstances. Does this make sense? Yeah. Like, it's not a great, like, one-to-one. -one. Like, it doesn't mean that you're going to be, like, expert class rock climber, like, right away. It's not I mean, like, you're going to be, like, the best out of the gate of all the CrossFitters, you know what I mean? But it's like, you're not starting at zero. You know, you have a strong core. Does that make sense? Uh, and this, it, it is kind of like the jack-of-all-trades statement that you're making, but it's, it's, it's more in the context of, like, you're more than just a jack-of-all-trades. You, you're kind of, like, super just good at a lot of different things. Because to be a concept artist, you kind of have to be like a miniature expert at lots of different ideas, you know? And so, so yeah, I, I'd say there's some truth to what you were saying, yeah. Um, but ultimately, uh, it's also kind of a little bit of like, uh, um, it's a little bit of, you're just super skilled at many different things. Mm -hmm. So, so that, that'll be my advice for you. Uh, moving forward is that actually like the kind of stuff that you did for my class is the first steps to to build a proper portfolio. Uh, you've seen plenty of good examples of portfolios, you know, uh, mm -hmm. for concept art. If you want to be an illustrator, then you have to look at illustration portfolios, right? If you want to be a concept artist, which it seems you do, then you have to build concept art. And and don't worry, man. Like I made the same mistake. I learned the hard way. Yeah, I actually um, been wanting to make or be an illustrator and I knew concept art was uh, the, like the door, you know, to the way to go about it to to just start, um, you know, from from ground zero, I guess. Being a concept art is, is, you know, introduction, I guess. No, it's it's not. Being an illustrator is an introduction to be an, an illustrator. <laughs> Like you, if like, let me, let me put it to you this way. If you genuinely want to be an illustrator, you need to stop practicing concept art. Like if you want to do that, like right now, then you need to start practicing illustration. Okay. Cause it really is different. But what I am saying is that if you learn concept art, you can transition to illustration, but it will just take time, you know? Uh, and it's, but it's not intro. I'm trying to actually explain that concept art is actually harder than illustration. It's the other way around, my man. Mm. Yeah. In fact, I think this is partly why I did well at the competition because many of the people I went against were good illustrators, you know? And a concept artist is someone who sometimes may need to illustrate, you know? And, uh, but they work with their creativity more so than most other industries, right? Where, like I'm telling you, like uh, an illustrator may very much not have to ever concept anything. Like if you take a look at like some of the classic illustrators that we all love, like uh, Norman Rockwell, right? He used reference like, like a motherfucker. Like he literally just drew what he took pictures of. He just copy pasted it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, who was another one? Like Sargent used live models. 
even like Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo, Michelangelo used live models. Do you see what I'm getting at? Like they didn't like the statue David is not an invention. Statue David is glorified fan art. It's a commission. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he, like Michelangelo did not invent David. And even the David statue is not an, a creation of some random uh, character that he had in his mind. He had, uh, it was one of his pupils. He just modeled him all the time. That, I think that same model was also modeled for Adam on the Sixteen Chapel. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. So that, that, is, that is what I'm trying to get at. That's, that's the difference. Yeah, you, you'll see that people have a harder time going to concert art than anything else. Uh, especially being really good at it, concept art. Like I, I kind of got lucky that I am both very stubborn and that I focused on being a concept artist than anything else. Because it's one of the last skills that are, that are going to go. Yeah, the stubbornness is because everyone told me that I should do other stuff because concept art was too hard. And I was like, no, nah, I want to do concept art. And I wanted to do the hardest one, which is character concept art. You know? Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, I want to do that. And they're like, yeah, but that shit's hard, bro. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> I was like, so how do I do it though? Like what do I have to do? What's the steps? Like the steps is that you quit and you do something else like 3D. And I was like, what? <laughs> that doesn't seem like good strategy. Like, no, no, no. That's the strategy. Quit with your head. Um, but obviously, I'm not giving you that advice. I'm giving you the opposite. You do whatever you want to do. You do you, boo. You just go hard. Yeah. Now, again, I'm not trying to discount what illustrators are either. You know, I'm, I really am saying that illustrators are hard to do too. You know, it's not that it's it's easy. I'm just saying concept art is harder, uh, like at the expert level right like think of some of the most popular uh illustrators like ones that are making tons of money off of their their works like uh like if you take a look at like sakimi chan like is she generally creating original content you know most of it is based off of fan fiction you know and uh it does well because most people recognize these characters just not in a super sexualized way and some people are really into that you know and so uh, some of your favorite illustrators that are probably on ArtStation, they're probably illustrating characters for a very popular video games that you may like, you know? But the question is, did they design them? The answer is probably not. Again, it doesn't mean that if you're an illustrator that you can't concept, it's just gonna be harder. And some of the best, better, better illustrators are also really good at concept and vice versa, you know? Like very good concept artists are pretty good at illustration. So anyway, that's my long-winded winded advice on all this stuff. Any questions? Yes, I have one actually. Go for it. Yeah. So um, in in terms of events, I know you mentioned the uh, the GDC event, but is there any other ones you would recommend for us yeah. to attend? THU is a pretty big one. I would recommend that. That one's a good one. Um, uh, there's GamesCon is pretty cool. PAX, uh, GDC, um, just anywhere where there's going to be artists. There's a lot of workshops around the world. Just got to keep your eyes open for them. And if they're close to you, then you should try to attend them. Uh, where, are you, where are you coming from? Uh, uh, Virginia. Virginia in the States? Yeah. What the? Oh, okay. Um, yeah. So then there, there might be, there's definitely a lot of stuff on the East Coast, uh, like PAX East. And um, yeah, PAX East is a pretty big one. And there's a lot of indie studios there that you can try to get your work seen by. Uh, Comic Con is another good one. But since you're in the States, it's a little bit easier to kind of travel within the States. Because push come to shove, you can always drive. And I've seen this happen. In fact, I've seen a student drive from New York to 
Toronto to go to um, an event called Edge Control. And uh, that was pretty cool. Gotcha. One of my students. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, but um, yeah, just doing some quick Google searches, you can find many of these types of places. That's usually what I do. I just go to forums and Google search. That's how, like, I was trying to find, like, an indie development, like, convention, and that's how I found Indiecade. Mm. But I just Googled it. Is that kind of how you would also go about, like, finding smaller, um, like, studios to apply for? Just kind yeah. of searching around? Yeah, I, um, I follow a lot of YouTube channels, and a lot of them, like, talk about small indie studios a lot. And so that's how I find out about a lot of studios and video games. Yeah, you just gotta, you gotta take it as like another job, you know, which is to like constantly be alert to this type of stuff, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Again, like people, people just want like people to come to them, but like it's just not realistic, you know? It's just, you gotta like, you gotta be your own uh, agent in a lot of ways, you know? Right, yeah. Um. But it's it's not as hard as it used to be. I mean, there was there would be a there was a time where I would be like, it's really hard. You got to hustle, man. Got to play that game, dude. You got to hustle hard, hustle, hustle, hustle. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Like the people that talk, talk like this. Um, but it's just not the case anymore. It just isn't. You know, because there's so many resources. There's so many different kinds of things available to you guys that it's kind of crazy. Uh, Lightbox is going to be a huge event uh, it's this September. So if you can get to that one, that'd be great. I'm, I'm going to be going to that one. I got a booth and everything. I'm going to be doing a demo too on the latest uh, Adobe painting software. So that should be cool. Yeah, I really wanted to go that, to that one, but I might have to just uh, skip this year and go to the next one. Yeah, it's always next year. Just save that money. Save that money. Any other questions? That was a good one. Uh, yeah, I have more if nobody else has any. We'll just hang that hang tight just for a second. So you don't hog it all. Go in once. Go in twice. Sold. To the man that already asked a question. <laughs> um let's see i had a question about uh, when i was researching um, reference material uh -huh. i saw that a lot of artists would have say like a finished piece on the side and then orthographics and then within all of that they would write notes and even have like images next to it kind of describing uh -huh. what was going on is that something you would recommend doing yeah that's not a bad idea okay and i would recommend it um, I think the premise behind that is that, you know, nobody gets to see your thoughts. So you, an opportunity to kind of clarify what you meant by certain design choices. It's always pretty good strats. So, yeah, I, I, I am not opposed to this. Yeah, just anything that can get people to, to, to be engaged with your artwork. It is kind of helpful too, from an employer standpoint, to kind of see how you think, because sometimes the image isn't enough, you know? Right, yeah. All right, let me see if I can add some, some color variants to this bad boy, let's see. You know what would be cool? Kind of I think messed up. There's not enough detail. Maybe I can do it. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. I like that. 
<laughs> Any other questions? Sorry if you guys don't have any. I'll just keep painting, talking to myself. <laughs> I really love these these brushes that I've been using. Uh, they're like from the set that Paylang uses. And the Peter Jablinski. These guys are like masters. Oh uh, yes, Paylang brushes are really nice. Yeah, they have really good. Yeah, there's um, there's a that new painting software I was mentioning earlier by Adobe. They have some sick brushes. They feel and act very painterly. It's really cool. They're just so painterly, and it's really hard for me to control them. Um, and so I'm trying to figure it out. But I'm gonna be talking with the developers uh, next week, so I'm gonna be like mention this to them that there is some value to having some digital tools. But we'll see how they respond. What software is this again you're talking about? It's called Adobe Gemini. It's supposed to be like a standalone painting pro program that's supposed to be for the iPad. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. I saw uh, Carlo Ortiz demoing it on like a live stream a couple weeks ago. It looks interesting. Yeah, that's the one. And so, it, and it does look interesting. And it is somewhat interesting. I'm not sure if, I, I think the general public is not going to like it. Oh, really? Yeah, they they don't like Procreate already, like some of my friends. Others that are that get that Procreate's a different software love it. But other people can't because they can't use like a keyboard, you know what I mean? Like, and I'm just like, stop treating it like Photoshop. And this is like the same thing with this. Like if people are going to try to treat it like Photoshop and that's going to turn them off. And uh, I, I always go with the mentality of think of the philosophy of the people who are making the tool, like what is their goal? And think in those terms versus thinking in terms of like what you're expecting, because then you're always gonna be disappointed. You know what I mean? Um, and people don't do that. They get real caught up in their own biases. We were just watching, me and my wife were watching this movie called I Am Mother. And I was just like, oh yeah, totally, this is what's gonna happen. <laughs> and then it happened. I don't know if you guys saw it, but spoiler alert, it's human suck. And uh, <laughs> it's like, yeah, duh. you know? Yeah. And, uh, it's very similar like, to the premise of uh, I Am Robot or Transcendence, I think is another one with Johnny Depp. Transcendence is the less popular one. It's the one uh, where Johnny Depp like has like cancer or whatever, his character, and then he is like uploading his subconscious to the internet, and he starts doing this kind of nefarious type of stuff, and people think that he's like becoming evil, right, and doing all this weird stuff, and they're like getting real skeptical of it, so they all ultimately unplug him, but then they find out what he was doing was basically like creating nanobots that were going to replant trees, fix the ozone layer, essentially to remove climate change, <laughs> you know, and give humans a fighting oh, chance. Yeah, give humans a fighting chance. But because he was like talking like a robot and shit, no one trusted it. <laughs> and that's ultimately a lot of my sentiment too, is that I think humans are kind of garbage uh, as a collective, yeah. you know? <laughs> Yeah. as a collective right and um I always like to use the example of like the sugar tax here that happened in, in the states so in new york they wanted to increase the the cost of sugar by like because people were buying like 32 ounce drinks which is enormous of just like coke you know what i'm saying like just buying like a whole liter just for themselves to just drink 
<laughs> and they're like, okay, look, well, that's clearly unhealthy. We're going to tax people to prevent, like, to kind of de incentivize the the buying of these amounts of <laughs> consuming amount these amounts of soda, you know. And people lost their goddamn mind. They're like, what? Don't tread on me. <laughs> Don't tread on me. I'll kill myself. Or I want to kill myself. You know that kind of attitude. And it's like, yeah. it's like that's a great example of like our collective stupidity. You know, like people like because they don't have control, they would rather fucking die. <laughs> and I like to think of it like my children. Like my children are stupid. You know, um, and I don't mean that as an insult. Like they're just children. They don't know a lot of stuff, right? <laughs> and so like if i were to just like i have friends who treat their children like they know what they're doing like the kids know what's up and like <laughs> like they get their kids like, oh, like how do you get your kids to eat broccoli and shit and i'm like what are you talking about <laughs> we make them <laughs> and they're like what you make them but don't you feel like you're like in, like interfering with their independence and all that stuff and i'm like dude my mom made me eat like vegetables all the time and i feel like i grew up okay you know, but what are you, what are you talking about? It's like, kids don't know better. Of course, kids are going to want to eat chicken nuggets and Cheetos all the time. Like you got to re recognize that that shit's tasty as fuck. It's, yeah. but it's, it's, it's clearly bad for them. <laughs> you know, it's bad for you. You don't do it because it's so incredibly unhealthy. So why are you making your kids do it? You know, it's, it's so crazy, you know? And uh, it's like, you got to teach them about this stuff this is where they learn it from you know otherwise they'll learn it on the hospital bed when they're like getting their third heart bypass you know surgery you know what i mean and it's it's like that's what i'm saying like uh, collectively we act like children we make stupid childish decision, decisions uh, we're very short-sighted you know and so you know i'm a big fan of robots <laughs> <laughs> like uh like uh i was arguing with my wife about this too about how um like you know automated cars and stuff like this and um i was talking about how there, this is up this ethical question that some of these people are trying to like answer which is like what happens when uh, a car has to make the choice between the life of your family or the life of another family and she's like i want the other family to die and I was like, okay, yeah, I get that. I was like, but what if it's just you and me and it was like a family of five? Like there are three little kids and the mom and dad or whatever, right? And she's like, still them. And I'm like, see, that's that's why that's why we fucking suck as humans. <laughs> you know? <laughs> because if it was reversed, if it was me and my wife and our three kids, and it was like again reversed, like it was just two people, they also have kids at home, you know, right? Mm -hmm. and and now the context has switched now we are the ones that are outnumbered you know then it's like obvious we should survive right it's the it's the it's the age-old conundrum of like the the jewish um people running from the nazis they're hiding in a basement right and um and there's nazis above them walking looking for the these jewish people and one of the jewish people has a little baby and there's like 20 or 30 people down in this hiding in this basement and this baby is about to cry and you as the mother or father have to make a choice to either suffocate your baby to stop them from crying or let the baby cry right and most people will not suffocate their baby and ultimately get everyone killed right and yeah uh, and i get that because if i was in that situation too if it was my little boy logan yeah we're all dead we're all dying <laughs> You know, you know what I mean, and I get, and robots won't make these stupid choices. They will think of the greater good, the larger good, because they just will be more logically thinking. That's why I think autistic people are the future, because autistic people think this way too, right? That's why they have hard times assimilating in social circumstances. You know, because they like they don't logically understand why people make these types of choices. You know, like our feelings. Like, what are you talking about your feelings? This is more logical. <laughs> you know this makes way more sense this is way more ethical, <laughs> more cost analysis doing what you suggested because i was telling like, my wife like the fact that a robot would kill somebody 
Nobody likes that. Even though automated cars would ultimately save millions and millions of lives because humans are terrible drivers. You know? Like in the United States, there's 1,500 hit and runs that never get solved. Meaning somebody hit you, killed you, and nobody will find that person who actually killed you. 1,500 a year. It's wild. Yeah, it's funny because I get in these gun these gun uh, rights debates and I'm always talking about like, I'm, I'm a big fan of banning guns, uh, but I've changed my mind. Some people have given me alternative strategies and it's, it's impractical, especially in the States. There's just too many. There's just no way to get around it. But I was like, yeah, we should get rid of them because they're incredibly dangerous. And then I remember somebody was like, well, cars are dangerous. Millions of people die every day. And I'm like, yeah, we should ban cars too. We should like all be driving <laughs> trains and automated cars. Like your point? <laughs> <laughs> it's like you're right they're just as dangerous if not more dangerous you're absolutely right fuck cars you know <laughs> it's like well like i don't you thought that that was gonna get me dude it's like i hate driving dude. i'm scared like i used to drive to la every day for like a year and a half when i worked in santa monica i literally saw car accidents every day and it was traumatic man i drive like a grandpa now i drive like 60 miles an hour it's like 10 miles below the speed limit and on the freeway like, I'm literally people honking past me. I'm like, I don't give a fuck, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I, I want to live. I don't want to take chances. Like, there was this one time I was driving home where, like, this car, I'll illustrate it for you guys, like, my perspective. So I was driving, right? So it's kind of like this. So, like, I'm in this lane, and there's, like, a couple lanes here, and there's, like, a car, like, right over here, right? Like, about, that's kind of peripheral. What I saw, there's buildings and stuff over here, right? And it's like a large freeway and it was raining. Okay. So I'm in my lane, just minding my own business. Here's my dashboard. Here's my steering wheel. I'm like, do, 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 right. And then this, this person right here, just, just like hydroplanes and their car was like this. And I can like see the guy's face and his headlights, you know? <laughs> and I was like, Oh my God. So I smirched to the next lane because if I didn't, he would have ran right in front of me, you know what I mean? And luckily, there was no other cars driving that night. It was late at night. I was driving home from work, and I drive like a grandpa. <laughs> you know? I wasn't going the stealing. I was going even slower because it was raining. I was probably going 55, maybe 50 miles an hour, you know, with 70 mile per hour speed limit, you know? I don't give two fucks, dude. <laughs> I don't care if you're angry. I'm driving slow. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like to, to my point is like whenever people say that, like they bring that up, I'm like, like as a gotcha. And I'm like, nah, band cars too, dude. We fucked up. We got these metal machines are incredibly dangerous. <laughs> you know? <laughs> They're just, they frighten me, dude. Um, like the car that I'm going to buy too, like the, I'm going to buy a new car. It's just like a slow, crappy looking car, like a Prius. Because it's cost efficient, and it get, it just does the job. Point A to point B type of thing. Otherwise, if I can just have public transport, I would just take that any day, any day of the week. I had it when I was in Korea. I loved it. I just had a skateboard and just a freaking train pass, and I can go anywhere and everywhere for like ten bucks a month. It was great. Anyway, yeah, she was trying. Here, it's fairly good here. Yeah, man, I'm a big fan of public transport. I really prefer it. Uh, I don't think that, like, you know, cars to me, I think it can be still like a recreational thing. I'm sure people would still like to drive and we can let those people still drive. I'm not saying driving should be ultimately banned forever. I'm just saying, like, I think the number of deaths from driving is somewhere between, somewhere around a million people. Or no, it's not a million. It's like uh, 1.3 million or 1.4 million car accidents a year it's a lot um, it's too much so yes there is a fair argument <laughs> even more so uh getting rid of cars than there is guns that is that is a debate i am willing to have you know yeah when you see those numbers it's like like oh my gosh <laughs> like, it makes you deathly afraid like the other day we just saw a car that was literally engulfed in flames on the freeway Jesus. Yeah, and I'm like, mm. God damn it. <laughs> I hate this. 
I know uh, I have a couple friends who got in severe car accidents that uh, debilitated them, and, and one of them died. Uh, it wasn't a close friend, but it was an acquaintance. I knew them, but I know the people who knew them really well, and it was super tragic for my friends. And uh, it was just, they were sleeping, I think they were sleeping on the wheel, and uh, they flipped and they got, I think they got flown out of their car, died immediately. It sucks. Jeez. Yep. Back in this other area. You're like, I'm not driving anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Trust me, man. I wish I didn't have to drive anywhere. Yeah, that guy that did the hydroplane, those uh, his girlfriend was with him too. I saw like those two people. I think there might have been an argument, and I think he might have had a crazy girlfriend because it just happened all of a sudden. And I think she might like grab the wheel. And oh, sure. like, just be like, you're not gonna take me home right now, and just like grab the wheel. <laughs> just if I had to guess, you know, it might be permit uh it might be like a little sexist actually to think that this lady would go crazy on him but i will will say that it literally felt like it came out of nowhere you know like he just decided to do a donut in the middle of the road <laughs> for no reason you know actually it could have been him too he could have been like i'm taking you home <laughs> and just flip out yeah didn't realize that hydroplane's a real thing anyway any questions though before we get <laughs> I keep going on these little rants Wait, so you drove from Irvine to Santa Monica? Yeah, for about a year and a half. That sounds horrible. It was horrible. It was a four-hour drive uh, every day. Okay. Two hours there, two hours back. Uh, that makes me kind of sad because uh, most internships are like L.A. or Glendale. Yeah, I, um, it was a job. I was working at Santa Monica, so it was, it, was, it was something I needed to do. But when my daughter was born, then I started looking for ways to be closer to home. And I'm painting this little kneecap more than painting anything else in this thing. It's so funny. Any other questions, friends? Otherwise, we're going to end the class pretty soon. Uh, I don't think I have anything I could think of. It's no worries. No pressure, guys. Class is a little bit smaller then uh, usually I usually have like six to eight. So usually there's more opportunity because people, there's more people, but so don't feel too like, oh my God, I'm letting it down. I should be full of questions. <laughs> uh, you guys are good. You guys had a lot of intimate time too because of the class size being smaller. So um, yeah, so I think, yeah, because otherwise I'm just doodling on this thing. I don't really think I need to pin in where I think it's done. It's been done like 20 minutes ago. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I appreciate you guys. You guys are killer. Uh, appreciate all the hard work you did for my class. Appreciate all the effort, all the consistency. You guys have been great. Moving on, stay positive, stay in touch. It's been my greatest honor to teach you guys. I'll see you guys on the flip side. Keep painting, keep working, and... Uh, yeah, talk to you soon. Thanks again for taking the class. Appreciate you guys. Thanks, oh, so Yeah, one last thing. The the link I sent you, just keep an eye on that in like probably the next hour or two or especially tomorrow because the video takes time to upload to the Dropbox. But yeah, if you come back tomorrow, you should be able to download all the videos, including the other class too. You can watch that if you guys want on your own leisure. Um, with that, peace out, friends, and uh, talk to you later. See ya. Bye bye. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.